lots of colorful Sylvia robes. Three years ago I made five Sylvia robes from Sew Over It and I had them tucked away. I have fixed the small aspects that prevented me from wearing them. I can wear them now and two of them have a really special hack that I am in love with. So keep watching. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. If you've been following along this week, I've shared videos of the content in my UFO box, and finished objects, and I have been chipping away at them. I had five Sylvia robes there that I made in 2017. I wore them when I made them that year. I wore them a lot. They are all made in chiffon, really bright prints. I love the prints that I've chosen. Um, but once I moved to this country, I just couldn't stand those sleeves and now I have five that I really love <laughs> I really like how they look now. This pattern has been around for many years So it's not a new pattern at all. I know a lot of people have made it and loved it But as a short summary this pattern had another name originally and it was changed to Sylvia robe It actually does look like a robe. I mean it depends on your fabric choice. There's a fine line there of how you want to wear it so it could definitely be a robe so this is just a really simple pattern it's got four pattern pieces a front a back a sleeve and a band super simple it's just got a dropped shoulder and then from that seam you attach another piece that becomes a sleeve it's super wide super long I originally did shorten this to get my <laughs> pattern pieces in less fabric. This pattern comes from sizes extra small to extra large, so there's only four sizes there mm. on the pattern, and that goes from a UK size 8 to 18, so not very size inclusive at all. Um, there is a lot of positive ease though in this pattern, so I think if you were maybe a UK size 20 or 22, you might be able to still make this pattern work for you because there's about six to eight inches of positive ease at the bust and about eight inches of positive ease at the hips, you know? So if I looked at my measurements on the chart, they were between the, like the highest measurements in the range of the L and the lowest in the XL. <laughs> Considering all the ease, I just made a size large. Now, back then I had a lot of cuts of fabric that were one meter um, it is a sort of standard amount of fabric I buy when it's really nice fabric uh, usually more expensive fabric I know one meter gets me a lot of things and I was just really shocked at the fabric requirements here for this pattern um, even for the short version because there's a short and a long version it required a lot of fabric and I was able to get mine with one meter now back then I mentioned that the sleeves the grain line on the sleeves is not going up and down like most sleeves so it went across and that was super like would make you waste a lot of fabric so i just ignored that grain line and just placed my sleeve from the top to the bottom like you would do any other sleeve because it was just more economic that way i also cut my band on the cross grain and it's something i never mind doing if it's going to save me meters and meters <laughs> So the other day I showed you all of my Sylvia robes and mentioned I wanted to take these sleeves off. So I went about doing that and I did that with three uh, first because they were the ones that already didn't have the sleeve. I'd already taken the sleeve off. So went about to just hemming that and it was really simple. Um, nothing really special to say about those because the sewing was just a sleeve hem you know this is one i made in chiffon and it's got a hack i did a, a sort of seam there at the waist and then from that comes a high low half circle flounce that i drafted so this is quite a significant hack and i love how that looks i think it just gives it something different and having that sleeve there was just preventing me using this and i think it's a really nice top and the way I just hemmed these was just surging and folding under a really narrow hem. So this is a quarter of an inch folded in. I don't enjoy a deep hem on a dolman sleeve. This is what I'm going to call this. It's got a dolman sleeve now. <laughs> and this is just so much better. Um, yeah, so much better.
I have two videos on the channel, Yonks and Years Ago. If you're curious about what my sewing space used to look like and, and my context back then, you can have a look. Although I still cringe at those older videos, but there you go, it was my beginnings. And I did show exactly how to do this. You have seen me mention I like sewing bands and waistbands and cuffs and things the reverse way. If you want to know more about that, head over to the video I have about the Megan Nielsen the Matilda dress. Back then I was already mentioning doing the reverse method for these bands three years ago. Um, so it's something that I've been doing for a long time and it just makes total sense for me. And that's the way I sewed on all these, you know, bands. You know, this next one is super airy and flowy and the most fraying fabric I've ever worked with. You look at it and it's just flying everywhere. It's, it's really, really bad. And this one was made from a dress that I deconstructed, a dress I bought in New Zealand and wore to death. It was a very short dress. It was very wide. It had a lot of gathering into this like halter neck. So I did take the pieces and make it. Look, I was able to keep the really, really narrow hem that the original dress had, so I didn't have to hem this. This one has French seams inside. I mean, my serger would have eaten this alive. There's no way. So I just hem this normally, folded up and serged, and now I have a really nice top. This one, I didn't have enough fabric to get the bands out of my dress, so I put contrast black bands. I like the colors, the purple, the turquoise, you know, and I'm glad to have it now to wear with things, you know. The next one I have was actually the last one I made during that year. So this was the fifth one I made. By then I knew the pattern by heart and I was able to take a few liberties with it. This is another refashion. I found a blouse made out of crepe with this amazing print and it, I saw it in the markets in a pile of used clothes back then in Bolivia. And I was almost leaving Bolivia and I put myself on a ban of not buying any more thrifted clothes because everything was in boxes. My house was the shambles. But once I went to get veggies and I saw this blouse from the corner of my eye and I just had to get it, you know. Fell in love with this and I got it. Now you can see it's got a different type of print anywhere, although it's the same fabric. It's those just fabrics that are just amazing. And it's got black and red and you know, I just love it so much. And I couldn't get this piece of the sleeve from my blouse you know I'm working with what I have if you're if you're like deconstructing clothes you have the fabric sometimes the shapes they just don't match so I added a piece of black crepe that is the same weight as this crepe and I top stitched that down and it's just added a bit of interest there on the sleeves so the front and the back have that and that made this possible I was able to get the bands from the sleeves. I mean, this was just really fortunate. And I took the liberty here of doing the band completely different, completely easier, um, taking inspiration from a lot of robes I have deconstructed. Back then in Bolivia, I would buy robes made out of satin and deconstruct them because I use that satin material for lining, for blazers, for skirts, whatever. And I noticed that the band was just sewn on just sewn on and surged and the seam pressed in and voila it works just as well this doesn't need any top stitching it's super neat so much easier to do than all the other bands i'd been doing and totally appropriate totally acceptable you know you find items of clothing like this made in the shops and it's not inferior to what i was doing before and actually i feel that you can get better results and better precision with this because this pattern has you like hand sewing inside, slip stitching and just things that are just not necessary, I would say. You don't need to be hand sewing these things, you know. I'm not against hand sewing. I do a lot of that. But for a pattern like this, you don't need to be sewing the band inside by hand, you know. So this is the best one that I made that had that type of band just sewn on, you know. Nothing special there. And I absolutely love this one.
hope you're not getting bored because now comes a very interesting part. I have two more and I have done a hack to them and I'm so, so happy with them. You can't believe how happy I am and how much I'm just shooting myself for having gotten rid of the sleeves from the other ones because I would have done the same. So basically I have these sleeves there on my cutting mat. You know, I was just looking at them and thinking, you know, what a waste of nice fabric, you know, things always in my head. And then I remembered how much I love my Paula top from Republic to Chiffon. I'll put a picture here. I wear that thing all the time. I've made two of them. They have the ties at the front. And I'm not kidding you, every time I wear it out in the street, every single time someone will stop me and tell me, oh, I like your top. Every time I post a picture with that as part of the styling for another garment, I'll always get the comments here on the channel or Facebook or Instagram. I love that top, what's the pattern? It's, it's just a style I think that is really pretty and that a lot of people like to have those ties there. So I thought, you know, maybe I could get ties out of those sleeves and attach them somehow to the front here of my Sylvia robes. So I had two of them that I had the sleeves available in order for me to do that. And I'm going to insert here how I went about doing that. And then I'll show you how they look. I've been experimenting with the size of a tie and I think this is the size that I like. I've already cut another, another one that was too long and I need for this pattern piece to fit my sleeve pieces. I drew a rectangle that's 13 inches in length there and up here is four and five eighths. So I drew that rectangle and then from the tip here I measured three and then five. And so the width there is four and five eighths, the width there is three and three fourths and the width is three there and then nothing. <laughs> so you can see it goes getting narrower towards this area there and I'm going to just sew a quarter inch seam allowance and that will be the ties that I'm going to add to the front of these little cover-ups. This is one of the sleeve pieces I pulled off. You can see that little shape the sleeves have. This was the one that was attached to those little short sleeves and this straight bit there is the hem. So I'm going to be folding these onto themselves like that lengthwise. Um, fabric right sides together, try to match that up nicely. Then this tie piece that I just drafted fits perfect. You can see I've got a little left over there and there. And that's how I'm gonna cut two. So this will be the ties for one side, two layers, and I have my other sleeve here for the other side. And I have my sleeve pieces here for this other one. So I'm excited to try these just to give these a different look. I've sewn the ties right sides together and I've just surged them. That gives me a really small seam allowance and it's quite dense there. I don't think this is gonna unravel. So I'm gonna turn these right sides out. I've got the blue ones as well. And I'm still thinking how I'm gonna finish these edges. I sort of know how I'm gonna attach it to the front of the robe, but we shall see. I don't know if you can see, but I've pinned my ties on myself to see how high I want them. And they're just pinned on the outside. Hope you can see. Um, I'm happy with that height there, although I'm not going to sew them on the top of the band. I just want to see how high I want them to be. This is the shoulder seam right there. You can see the inside and this is the neck band that comes off into the center. And I've marked the line at the height where I want my tie. And the way I've figured out I'm going to put these on is very unconventional. I have surged the top there, the edges of the tie. This is not going to be seen, so this is completely fine. The long threads there that were left from the, from the serger, I used my big needle to thread it and just push them in there so that that's nice and closed. And so I'm just going to get my tie, this is the length here, and just put it on top here. You can see that little seam there that is holding that band. I'm just going to overlap the tie over that seam by about 3 eighths of an inch and I'm just going to pin this there and I'm going to hold this in place um, by doing just a quick hand baste. I'm going to be sewing this tie there from the other side of the robe so I'm not going to be seeing this thing here behind so I can't really rely on pins for that. It's a tiny little area there and I'm just going to hold that there with hand basting.
I really thought about this and this is going to give me a nice clean finish. So that's there. I'm going to go on the right side here and try and sew on top of that little seam there that I have right there just to hold that in place. So I've got my band there, the tie is underneath there, tucked away. You can see my basting stitches there and I can touch here where the tie starts. So that stitch line there that I have originally, I'm sewing on top of that. So that tie has been sewn. I'm just going to whip out these basting stitches there. So there I have my band and I'm going to bring this over to the center there. When I do that, on the inside, that is going to fold. So I sewed it like that, the surged area is in there. When I fold this out, it's going to be covered like that. And look, this thing is slipping and sliding everywhere because, you know, chiffon. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to adjust this tie there. And I'm going to put a few pins here. And look, you know I don't trust pins for this type of fabric. They just don't hold anything properly. So. I'm going to baste that there by hand again and I'm going to be sewing on the edge on the machine. So I just make sure that that's nice and straight at the back and nice and stretched towards the center here. And I'm just going to whip in some stitches here. And now I'm just going to sew this on the edge there. Look, this is navy. It's not going to be really noticeable that this extra little seam is there. Okay, so that's how it's going to look when I wear it. It's going to have the same seam it had there, it's going to have a little extra seam there. And on the inside, the tie is really clean inside. So there's no raw areas or anything and it's all nice and protected. And I'll repeat on the other side. And then this just comes out there and can be tied there. So this is the very first one I ever made. It's it's gorgeous. It's just the most floaty chiffon. And it's just the, the fabric, the colors are just gorgeous, in my opinion, of course. And I love these colors. And here you can see the tie. It's tied up there. Um, you saw how I drafted that. You know, I will put a detailed picture so you can see the dimensions of it on my blog post in case you want to give that a go because it's so easy and it makes such a huge statement on the front. And you know, it's just sewn on there like you saw me do. Nothing really hard. And on the inside, it's super clean. You know, there's no raw edges. Everything's protected. They have the right length and width to form a really nice tie. Um, yeah, I just love this so much now. Um, yeah, I just can't tell you how stoked I am to have been able to use the sleeves for this little detail on the front that I love so much. <laughs> And the other one I was able to do that with is this one. Navy blue chiffon with roses and like gray tones in there. And it's also got the tie there. I just love it so much. Um, yeah, same finish.
know, once I figured out how to do this and just got on with it, I would have put the ties, I am promising you, on all of the ones I had. And I didn't have those sleeves anymore. I don't know, did I leave them in Bolivia? Did I do what with them? I just, my mind is blank. Maybe the one with the flounce, I would have left that as is because the flounce already gives it something extra. Um, but you know, it's just, I love it. It's just so pretty and so feminine. And yeah, I, if you can't tell, I'm completely in love with this. Now, one thing I would say about these types of patterns, um, unless I really wanted to make a robe or like a dressing gown or, you know, something to wear for that purpose, I would make those in maybe a satin. But if I was planning to make these types of items to actually wear outside on the street, I would not make it in a satin. Just, it would just look like you're wearing a bathrobe in the street. And I don't like that look. I don't like that look. And now I've come to realize I don't like those sleeves. And now I know I took them off because of the heat conditions and stuff. I mean, I'm in the middle of autumn here and I'm always sweating. Like it's just the temperature is not going down. So even though I took them off because of that reason, now that I have them off, I just realized I don't like that type of sleeve. I don't like really wide woven sleeves like that. I prefer it like this. Just the, the initial draft there of the shoulder and the drop shoulder dolman type sleeve that is pretty otherwise yeah i'm not ever going to try a pattern again that has a big sort of rectangle sewn onto there um it's not a style that i like and it's just so borderline the bathrobe thing it just depends on the fabric that you choose and i would stick to the rayons the chiffons and the crepes for this style of top you know there are many brands from other pattern companies that have sort of similar styles to this um yeah i know what i like with this style and what i've made is what i like i think i can go out confidently that i don't look like i'm wearing a robe because i don't want to be wearing a bathrobe out in the street you know what i mean <laughs> this is what limitless sewing is for me uh, i repeat that a lot it's sort of my motto um just no limits really you have a piece of sleeve it can become something amazing like a little tie in the front and it just made this garment so much better and if i ever make this again which i doubt because i've already made it five times i would definitely put the tie on it because i think it just took it up a notch for sure <laughs> stay safe everyone and i will see you again very soon with another sewing video bye